Joe King comes out on stage and says, Yes, hello, this is Joe King. I'm not joking, but I prefer to be called Juris Dr. King. Okay, as you may have just heard, I have replaced myself with a new narrator, my alter ego, John Johnson. So, yes, for those scoring at home, I am an alter ego of Tom Murphy, but I myself have my own alter ego, John Johnson, who will be doing the narrating for the Joe King Show from now on. Now, some people are a little upset that I continue to produce content despite the writer's strike. Well, let me say this. I'm not a guild member, and neither is Tom Murphy. If someone wants to offer either one of us a job, or even John Johnson for that matter, we'll gladly pick it and stop producing content. But until that happens, I would prefer to still make content, okay? Okay, very good. Now, about the writer's strike. The main reason for the strike is unsatisfactory pay. Median screenwriter pay hasn't risen since 2018, and if we're accounting for inflation, which of course has skyrocketed in the last two years, it's actually fallen by 14%, while median weekly pay for writer-producers has declined by 23% over the last decade when adjusting for inflation. And that information is straight from an article on GamesRadar.com with the writer of the article named Emily Garbutt. Not Emily Garhass for the Weisenheimers out there, but Emily Garbutt. Okay, so anyway, this strike is shut down Saturday Night Live, the show that we at Saturday Not Alive love to spoof and pay homage to. And even though they aren't part of the guilds anymore on account of being dead, the writers and performers of Saturday Night Alive have informed me that they stand in solidarity with the living strikers and refuse to be portrayed on Saturday Night Alive until the strike is over. And that's a big blow as we had just hit episode number 250 and had many more in store for our seven or eight loyal listeners. But I'm going to try my best to put up some content here and there and interview deceased guests who are not affiliated with the writer's strike. The first episode, we of course had Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ was that fun. Okay, he didn't want to get into sex stuff, which I understand, but I'm here to ask the pointed and tough questions. When we interview guests, it's not going to be a puff piece, but instead hard-hitting questions. Anyway, on the last show, I mentioned that I was formerly a public defender. Okay, to that end, the other day, I saw a Facebook post that said, if you need a little motivation, call this number. I'm not going to give out the number. It's a class project where kindergartners give you a pep talk. And before I was a public defender... If I had heard that, I probably would have been like, aw, that's nice, little kids helping out grown-ups, that's so cute, blah, 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 okay? But now, as a former public defender, I'm thinking, are you people crazy? You know there's going to be these certain kind of grown-ups calling, telling these kindergartners in a musky voice that they've been very bad, and they need a stern talking to. Do I need to spell it out? That was a perfect post for pedophiles. Who wants to talk to kindergartners more than pedophiles? Okay, a normal non-pedophile person should see that post and be like, I don't need a pep talk from a goddamn five-year-old. I'm a grown man or woman, for Christ's sake. But for the pedophile, that post is gold, okay? They're going to be playing with their sexual organs while listening to five-year-olds tell them that everything's going to be okay. It's crazy. King walks off the stage and towards a seat behind a desk and says, And now to transition away from pedophilia, we do have a very special guest on our show. Please welcome famed inventor and engineer Nikola Tesla. Tesla walks out from behind a curtain and waves at the dead studio audience. Applause, applause, applause. Tesla takes a seat in the chair next to King's desk. King. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Tesla. Tesla, thank you for having me. King, so I'm sure some brainiacs out there want me to ask you some nitty-gritty questions about electrical engineering, really getting into the whole ACDC thing, but instead, I want to get to Nikola Tesla the man, okay, beyond your accomplishments. Is that okay? Tesla, whatever you'd like. King, okay then, turn of the century New York City. Who is the best whore on the market? Tesla, I beg your pardon. King, you know, who was that one whore out there on the street corner that really did a great job of giving your pickle a tickle? Tesla, I'd rather discuss something else. King, very good, very good, okay, because that was a trick question. If you had answered, then everyone would know you're an asshole, okay? Very good, okay, you're a sharp one, Mr. Tesla. Okay, speaking of sharp, how about those 
Tesla vehicles out there, huh? Tesla. Yes, they're quite lovely. Okay. And when did you invent the Tesla electric car? Tesla. Well, technically, I didn't invent the actual Tesla electric vehicle. It was Elon King. Now, wait a minute, smart guy. The freaking car's got your name on it. And you want me to believe that you're not the inventor? Tesla. The car was named in my honor, but it was built by Elon Musk. King. The Twitter guy? Tesla. Yes, of course. King. Huh, I didn't know that about him. Anyway, have you ever rode in one? Tesla. No. Okay. Why the hell not? Tesla. Well, I'm dead. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, now, you don't mind if I ask you some tough questions, do you? Tesla. Go right ahead. Okay. Now, I did a little research, okay, and in my research, looking up your Wikipedia page, I found some interesting tidbits. Now, it says you never slept more than two hours per night. Is that true? Tesla. That's correct. Okay. Now, that's bullshit, okay? Did they even have speed back then? How did you pull that off? Tesla. My mind was just unusually capable of staying awake and alert and continuing to take in new information compared to normal brains, I assume. King. Okay, now, it also said on Wikipedia that you somehow managed to walk 8 to 10 miles a day. Is that true? Tesla. Most days, yes. King. Okay, how the hell did you manage to walk that much and still not sleep? What kind of speed were you on anyway? Tesla. That's none of your business. King. Okay, very good, very good. Now, you were a lifelong bachelor, huh? Tesla. That's correct. I think avoiding a romantic personal life helped me with my career pursuits, but beyond that, I felt I could never be worthy enough for a woman, as I consider them superior in every way. King. Well, here, that's the thing, Nicola, okay? I've taken a look at your record, and you spent a lot of time begging the likes of J.P. Morgan for more money to fund your research. You know, what you should have done is married some random daughter of some rich-ass dude, okay, and had her pay for the research. Tesla rolls his eyes and looks at King with contempt. King, what? That's an honest question. Why didn't you marry for money? Tesla, I suppose the right situation never materialized. King, was the issue that you just hated women, Nicola? Tesla, I beg your pardon? King, you were quoted as saying, and I quote, In place of the soft voice, a gentle woman of my reverend worship has come the woman who thinks that her chief success in life lies in making herself as much as possible like man, in dress, voice, and actions, in sports and achievements of every kind. The tendency of women to push aside man, supplanting the old spirit of cooperation with him in all the affairs of life, is very disappointing to me, end quote. So, Mr. Tesla, I ask you, were you anti-women? Tesla, you don't have nearly the brain capacity to even begin to understand how much things have changed from when I was raised until the present day. I came from a completely different world, and women's role in society drastically changed during my lifetime. And in hindsight, as opposed to when I said that in 1924... I believe it is for the better. King, so you're pro-women then? Tesla, yes, of course. Can we talk about one of my many inventions, like the Tesla coil or something like King? Isn't it true, Mr. Tesla, that you lived in hotels for the last 40 or so years of your life? Tesla, what does that have to do with anything? You have the ability to ask me any number of questions, including that which I was close to, but did not fully complete at my death. World-changing ideas involving energy and vibration, many of which still haven't been instituted today. And instead you ask me about King. Here, you give me your speed hook up, and then I'll all start asking some smarter questions, all right? Tesla, this interview is over. Tesla takes off a wireless microphone and walks off stage. King. Well, there you go. Ever the eccentric, the magnificent, and brilliant Nikola Tesla. Okay, tune in next episode where we interview another deceased, distinguished guest. Until 
Until then, I'm Joe K.